Hi folks, Gary Simmons here from Game Institute and I thought I would just pop up a quick video and let you know that over the last couple of days I've been adding replay functionality to GI Racing and this is something that many of you have requested over the last couple of months because we have this lovely cinematic camera system that you're seeing on the screen right now but currently it's only used on the main menu in the closing credits scene and it seems a shame and of course I actually designed this camera system specifically for replays but then when I finally released GI Racing in its first uh, release I didn't have the replay functionality built in and that was there were two reasons firstly I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to do it if I'm perfectly honest with you because uh, I needed to do it in a way that would be a reliable enough replay but that had to be balanced off against keeping the file size small because replay files can grow very very big uh, prohibitively big if you're not very careful um, and the other reason I didn't do it is because it does complicate the code we now have to hook into various scripts um, and add code there specifically for recording replay information and I don't want to teach that while I'm trying to teach you know purely the racing aspects of the game project so the version that you're seeing on the screen right now uh, isn't released yet but it will be released very shortly I'm still testing it and making sure that everything is working as it should and this latest version which I think is version 3 will, will also have a couple of bug fixes I, uh, a couple of you um, did comment that uh, there were certain situations where you could find your car was reversing very very quickly and I fixed that problem very simple problem uh, where I just forgot to take the sign of the relative velocity into account and thus uh, found that we were not adding any air resistance when going backwards so pretty big oversight on my part and I'm sorry for that but uh, when I upgraded from version 1 to version 2 um, made a massive uh, change to the physics and that's the physics that I'm teaching in the videos but uh, that was a little oversight there okay so this version now if you see on the screen we're currently just viewing the cinematic sequence on the menu screen but you'll notice there is now a new button called view replays and if I click that we're now presented with this new screen and it shows all of the replays that I've currently got recorded and I can just select them and you can see that when I do select them I get this button down the bottom that tells me or asks me or I don't know just says load selected replay basically so if I s select that you can see it's going to now load in the replay scene now when the replay scene is loaded it doesn't start playing you'll notice that there is an actual a play button that allows us to do that like so and uh, while it's playing we can also press C to cycle through the cinematic camera list so just as in the cinematic sequences that we see on the main menu scene the change of cameras happen automatically it doesn't do that in the replay um, originally I thought I was going to do it that way but I actually found it really annoying when you wanted to see something from a very specific angle but there is also something much much cooler which is if you look at the bottom of the screen we now have a timeline that we can not only can we change camera while the game is in a paused state but we can also scrub through the timeline rewinding and forward winding anytime we want to see some action from a different angle so I say hey that was cool let me just uh, run that back change the camera angle and see it from a different perspective and of course once again you can change the camera angles on the fly while it's racing and you have the ability to to scrub through the entire race that way pretty cool huh oh yeah um, and what what I'm really happy about is that the the replay files for the woodland drive track which is a pretty big track um, weigh in at a very small file size and when I very first started with my original kind of rough draft of the replay system I was getting ridiculous file sizes you know somewhere around the 40 50 meg by the time I um, had, 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 had accounted for not just the keyframes of the positions and the orientations and stuff but also all of the particle effects and the skidding and stuff and I found a way to kind of cheat a little bit so that some of the particle effects and skid sounds and stuff won't be exactly the same in the replay but it doesn't matter as long as our cars are in the same position we record body damage and crash impacts and crash sound effects then anything you know such as you know how much smoke was there 
really around that corner when I skidded around it. No one cares about that. Just as long as there was some smoke the first time and there's some smoke the second time. So a lot of that stuff is uh, played out in real time. And with file compression as well, I was hoping to get it down to something around a seven to eight megabyte. What I've actually got for the Woodland Drive is uh, an average of around about two and a half megabyte, which um, is far better than I could hope for. And I'm using a compression library as well, which really helps when I save the file called Sharp Lib. Um, and that's good. that DLL is going to be included in the in the project when you download it. So we've seen sort of how the replay system sort of works if you've already got a recorded replay. So let's have a little look about how it's kind of embedded into the actual game. So if I just go to, I don't know, let me go to Quick Race and choose Woodland Drive Wet Clear. And I'll just record a few seconds. I am playing this on keys, guys, all right, which is uh, I'm not particularly very good at, so excuse my terrible driving while I'm testing this. I'll just get around the first bend. So there you go, and we're off. See if I can get through those cars. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, that was some pretty skilled driving. Get to the front of the pack, but oh, nearly lost it. Okay, so if you if the race ends, or if I bail from it and retire from the race, which I'm going to do now, you'll see how the replay system is now worked into the workflow of the game. So I retire from race, it now says processing replay data, and you're immediately presented with the replay of the race that you've just raced. Now, I'm doing a quick race, but if this was part of a tournament race, you will be presented this screen even before you see the track placement. So it gives you a chance to review the action, um, save the file if you wish. Now, the replays aren't automatically saved, so if you want to save a replay, you must hit that save button, and that shows you what the name of the file will be. And that's basically saved in the data replays folder of the final built project. Um, of course, we can, uh, you know, press play or scrub through how I just drove and you can see hey that's why I s took that pretty cool maneuver through those cars there so yeah I'm just scrubbing the timeline there so I'm going to hit save so saving replay and then when I exit because this was on the quick start menu that I selected this race that's going to take me back to the quick start race menu and ultimately if I press escape I'm back at the main menu um, but you can also see if, if I just select to start a new race or a new season and um, I'm in a proper tournament race I'll just record a few seconds of this and retire from the race so you can see what I mean okay I retire from the race we get straight taken once again straight to the replay uh, which we can save play you know scrub through whatever but then when we press exit then the game continues as normal we're then taken to the final race standing screen so we've just inserted that replay preview and that replay uh, save ability right in the middle of you know the race ending and the race results table and so that's all there is to actually using the replay system and like I said at any point in time we can literally just return to the main menu uh, go to the view replays and um, you know there's our new replay there that we just saved okay guys so before I go let me just talk for a minute or two about some of the technical details behind my implementation of the replay system now this isn't going to be anything in depth and I'm not going to look at any source code I'm literally just going to tell you some of the decisions that I made because I know that some of you are also trying to implement your own replay systems and for any of you that are having trouble with it then some of the choices and the decisions that I've made may be enough to get you up and running uh, in the meantime at least until mine is released now you may be surprised to know from looking at the replays that I just showed you that the replay system in GI Racing is actually only sampling position and orientation data at 10 frames per second um, and then the replay system then interpolates between bounding keyframes at runtime so that it still looks nice and smooth. And this allows us to kind of literally shave, you know, four fifths of the file size off. My original system um, was just saving it at the fixed update time interval, which is 50 times per second. And that was giving me very large files at 10 frames per second. Obviously, we've got much less accuracy 
but uh, with interpolation it looks great and in my experience from testing this thing it's fine but like I said that sample frequency you can change and the way that this works is it's really a blending of pre-recorded data and also utilizing Unity's rigid body physics system at replay runtime this allows me to for example record positions and rotation so we know that the cars will always be in the absolute correct places each time but things such as the wheel colliders and how they make contact with the ground and whether that causes skids and particle systems and whether those wheels uh, you know cause skid marks to be generated on the actual track itself all of those things are calculated at replay runtime not pre-recorded now this basically means that I had to jump through some hoops because obviously Unity's rigid body physics system normally uh, is supposed to be in control of the rigid body um, and that's how it calculates those those kind of things based off of its velocity. Our cars essentially haven't got any velocity, we're literally just placing them you know 50 times per second at their interpolated keyframe positions. So um, the way that I got around that was to also record not just the position and rotation, but some other data that I needed as well. Um, so if I just very quickly open up the top of the GI Racing Replay system, you can see that this is actually what a standard sort of key frame looks like. We record the frame position, which is used during interpolation. We store position and rotation, obviously, but we also store velocity. And what I can do is when I suck out a replay key out of a replay stream for a given car, I can set the position, the rotation and the velocity of that car's rigid body. Now, that velocity is only ever going to be set like that for one frame because in the very next frame, we're going to kind of override its position and rotation again. However, by having this velocity set, what it means is that scripts such as the car script and in particular the update wheel graphics function, which is what calculates whether the wheels are skidding and you know how fast the car is going, when that function is called, that velocity will still be technically set um, and therefore we get very similar results with respect to how the wheel colliders are making contact with the ground, whether they cause skidding, whether the skid sound should be played and all that type of stuff. Also things such as calculating the wheel rotation speed. So what that allows us to do is it allows us to forget about having to key things such as whether there's any skid smoke, whether there's any skid marks generated, and also whether there's any skid sounds. I mean, imagine how much you could bloat your file if you had to record in every keyframe that these sounds were playing and this is how loud they were playing and you know so forth and the same for um, things such as when the car is scraping up against the wall because we're kind of we're setting that velocity and the colliders of the cars are still in place we, we don't have to bother recording that the wall scraped at this particular moment in time we'll just let that happen at replay runtime using the physics system and it's very important that when we do that that we we do set that velocity of the rigid body and when we set the position and rotation of the car we don't set its transforms position and rotation we set its rigid bodies position and rotation and in fact you'll see that I've added a script sorry I've added a function sorry to the car script here called set state from key and this is the single point at which the replay system positions a car now, setting the position, the rotation, and the velocity was all well and good. That allowed me to get crashes and scrape sound effects and skid marks and skid particle effects. It didn't really help me with respect to the sound. Um, so, in order to make sure that we don't have to keyframe, you know, the pitch of all the engine sounds for every car, which would really bloat the, the, the replay file size, and not have to worry about keying things such as what gear the car is in because the sound controller attached to car uses that gear to know you know what pitch it should be playing at and, and what engine sound it should be playing I also record some additional information as you can see I record the current steering axis the current throttle axis whether the handbrake is on or off and the current RPM of the engine 
and by resetting all of these each keyframe in the car that allows the sound system to completely take care of itself um, and with 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 respect to the RPM, that's going to make sure that not only is the engine playing at the correct speed, but the wheel colliders, uh, or at least their graphical representations, are also rotating at the right speed. And of course, the steering axis is important because uh, we don't want to have to keyframe, you know, the the exact angles every every frame that the wheels are turned at. So we can just record that minus one to plus one axis value and recreate that each keyframe. And once again, in between those uh, those keyframes, we're interpolating, so we get nice smooth steering as well. Now you'll notice that there is a little section of code here that says if freeze frame is active and that basically means that when the replay is stopped and we're scrubbing on the timeline when that's the case we literally use the uh, transform uh, to set its position and rotation but it's very important that we don't do that when the system is running if you try and alter a dynamic rigid body using its transform that's very inefficient so you must use rigid body to do that but we can't use the rigid body's uh, position and rotation when it when we're in a freeze frame position that won't work out time scale will also be zero at that point which you know messes everything up because the game is essentially paused if we go back to the replay system farm you can see if i scroll down to the main class here, GI Racing Replay System, you'll notice that all of this keyframe data is stored in a series of replay streams. So you can see that I have a list here, and the list itself contains a list of GI Replay Stream Keys, which, you know, is that, that structure or class up here that contains all of our key information. So in the Replay Streams list, what we have is a list of keys for each car. And we also, that's, that's all well and good, but we also need additional information. You see, the thing is, because we're only uh, storing data at uh, 10 frames per second, we can't really rely on the real-time physics playback to accurately model collisions between cars and apply the same body damage. Remember that we're only kind of roughly recreating the positions and the velocities that actually happened whilst to the human eye it might look identical because the cars weren't going you know the exact same velocity what can happen is in the race you might have hit a car and got your body damage you know severe body damage applied to the front of the car but on the replay trying to just use the live collider system the velocity wasn't quite the same or the angle was slightly off remember we're interpolating positions here so they're not hitting each other in exactly the same way what you could happen is in the race your body your car got completely crumpled up in the replay no body damage was done at all so what we needed to do was have a separate event stream um, which is what you can see here it's just another list and uh, it uh, contains uh, replay event key objects and all I basically do is any data that I absolutely must have recreated, such as when a collision happens that causes body damage, I basically create a key and store it in this event stream. Um, and then at replay, I can just say, hey, what, what happened at this particular point in time? Do I have any keys? If I do, what are they? And the things that I keyed were things like uh, any body damage that was done to either the front, the rear, or the sides of the car, which basically means in the car script, Whenever we call the apply front body damage function, for example, um, in that function now, we now have to sort of contact the replay system and say, I'm applying body damage, here is a key. Um, and I also needed to add functionality to the car script that allows us to undo the body damage as well. Because remember, we can scrub back and forwards on that timeline. So just as we can apply the body damage, we also need to be able to unapply it if we rewind the, uh, the replay. So that's, I mean, I know I'm kind of rambling a bit here, but uh, it gives you a rough idea of some of the things and some of the decisions that I've made that allowed me to keep the file size really small while still keeping accuracy where we needed it. And the things that I record in the event stream are things such as any body damage that's done, any big crash sound effects as a result of the body damage, 
And also when two cars collide in the game or if you collide very strongly with a wall, there is a crash particle system that, you know, sort of spits out a load of debris. And we want that to be recreated too because it looks really weird in the replay if we don't also key that in the event stream. Two cars hit each other, they all crumple up and we don't see any debris or puffs of smoke. So those are the things that I keyframe. Of course, you could keyframe more if you wanted more accuracy, but I found that's just fine for me. Like I said, I'm still working on it. It's pretty much done now, and I'll be releasing it shortly. And uh, down the road, when I've got a few more of the GI Racing videos under my belt, uh, I'll probably do a much more thorough discussion of the replay class and uh, you know the changes that have had to be made to the track manager, the game manager, the, uh, the crash controller script, and the uh, car script itself. Okay, so thanks for listening, and good luck with your own replay system.